so what's the difference between a meeting and a workshop? Well, that's a great question. Um, a meeting, in my mind, is pretty unstructured. Even if you come in with an agenda, generally you're sort of like having an open conversation. Um, you're not really visualizing any of the thoughts that you're having. So imagine you go into a meeting with someone, four, four or five people. Person A goes, oh, I think this. Person B, person C, person, and so on and so forth. They're all adding like these imaginary post-it notes to an imaginary whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Um, by the time it comes to actually making a decision or reflecting on any of those points, you're probably only remembering a couple of them. Yep. Uh, so in my mind, a workshop is a very um, pro clearly thought out process with key points um, and decisions. So there's actually a framework designed by uh, AJ and Smart, one of the biggest workshopping uh, yep. consultancies in the world um, called the Four Cs. The Four Cs? Yeah, so they do the... Four, is yeah. it Four Cs? Four Cs. Four Cs, okay. Yeah. Um, so you start off with a collect. Then you uh, a collect phase where you gather information, mm -hmm. and then you do a, a create a create phase, mm -hmm. um, and as you move through, you get to the commit phase, uh, which like ends with you sort of making that decision. Um, I, because I know for a fact, and this is me sort of knowing for a fact here, that you uh, when we're talking about ice break your exercises. Yes. You did a really cool one with a duck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love this one, by the way. I don't know if you've seen or heard about the ice duck icebreaker exercise, but I'm definitely going to try that one in my next meeting when I have people, maybe more people I know, because yeah, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. Fun. So what is the duck exercise? <laughs> okay, it's really simple. Um, you start off, give everyone post-its, sticky notes, um, in a Sharpie. Um, then you ask them, you, you tell them, you've got 60 seconds, draw a duck. Um, draw a duck yeah, in 60 a, seconds. Just draw a duck, 60 seconds. So you set timer, and then you ask them to put that up on a whiteboard, um, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Then you, you sort of it. And the reason that that's great is because um, a lot of the time when we're coming into these sessions, there's like a, a bit of fear of creativity, a bit of fear, mm -hmm. especially fear of visualizing things. People feel like they can't sketch, and that immediately cracks through that. <laughs> and I mean, have, uh, David's top three tips for uh, facilitating and running fantastic workshops. And I actually think that in our uh, eagerness to, uh, we can just summarize that. So yeah. number one is build trust. Right. Yeah. So beyond just workshopping, um, focusing on collaboration in general, um, what I would say is important is to like focus on trust-based systems rather than control-based systems. Um, and just in the, uh, for the sake of time, I'll use a quick analogy from one of my favorite books, Brave New Work. Um, to, illust to illustrate this concept. So the difference between a control-based system and a, a trust-based system is like a traffic lights mm -hmm. and roundabouts. Yeah. So a traffic light tells you when to stop and start and go and when to slow down. But what happens when everyone hits an orange, mm -hmm. sees the orange light, they put their foot down, they try and break the rules, they try and get, they, they, try, they don't want to stop, right? Whereas a roundabout is a trust-based system. You set the rules out for people mm -hmm. and then respect that everyone in the car is like a rational, you know, thinking human being, yeah, yeah, and they yeah, follow yeah. the rules. And you can apply the same to, to organizing a team and collaborating with one another. And you also, of course, said leverage uh, workshops. Right. The, uh, we talked a lot about workshops, so I keep this brief. The reason that we, I, I say leverage workshopping and workshopping and facilitation is because workshops are a contextual micro process, right? We have processes for the day to day, um, but we don't usually have processes for, hey, we have this sort of start of the project issue. What do we do to kick off a project? Mm -hmm. Workshop can be added there. Contextual thing, open up the space, remove all the sort of noise from your day to day, focus for four hours or a mm -hmm. couple of days, um, get everyone aligned, make a decision, back to business as usual. Yeah. And that's why they're useful because in that space, you're not it's not the it's not it's a step out of the norm mm. you can start seeing people from different angles you don't just look at them and like mm. hey that person writes the code that person makes the visuals mm. that person <laughs> manages the project you're all sort of suddenly you know yeah in, in, in harmony working together bringing ideas to the table just having discussions and i think that's what's really great about yeah them. and then uh, tip number three then of course yeah avoid the change theater i love that expression <laughs> by the way avoid the change theater avoid change what, what do you mean by that okay so um, you probably all have been part of businesses where they go through these big planning processes, big like, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. It takes months, lots of resources from the senior management team and the leadership of the leadership team. They make a big announcement, big song and dance, uh, change everything all at once, um, and then six weeks later, it's back to the back to business as usual. Nothing really changes, or you exist in this weird middle ground. That's change theatre. It's the idea that that six months is is actually changed. It's not. It's mm -hmm. standing still, having discussions, and it's like trying to do 
the big bang release you know mm. in the digital space and the software world we've all moved away from that we know that we need to do continuous releases mm. yeah but in the sort of leadership world the collaboration world we still do big bang releases we're like, okay we're going to change everything we're going to move oh, to this yeah. thing we're going to do that we're going to do this <laughs> so the solution to that is to instead brace more agile methodology to and um to change so 